Now available in paperback and Kindle Unlimited, John Haynes, A Conversation with Death. The man who rules the world and the angel of darkness take on a horde of demons in this inaugural John Haynes series adventure. Get John Haynes, A Conversation with Death for 99 cents on Kindle or in paperback today. There's talk in Hollywood about making Idris Elba the new James Bond. And to that, I say no thank you, because Idris Elba can do way better than being James Bond and putting on the tuxedo that Sean Carnery, George Lazenby, Roger Moore, Pierce Brosnan, and Daniel Craig farted in. And the reason why I say that Idris Elba can do better than playing James Bond is because Idris Elba is an incredibly talented actor and he does not need to be the black version of a white character. And when it comes down to James Bond, James Bond is a white British man and he should remain a white British man because that's what Ian Fleming envisioned him way back in the 1940s and 1950s when he wrote that character. And because that character is a white British male, he should stay true to his roots because to change his ethnicity is to change his character and it means changing him into someone who is not what Ian Fleming envisioned when he created him. So for me, I don't want to see Idris Elba as James Bond. No, I want to see Idris Elba given his own character that he can play his own way and play to play to his own strengths because James Bond is a character designed for white men and it should remain portrayed by a white man like Henry Cavill. That's the man who I believe is more qualified to play James Bond and when it comes down to Idris Elba, if Hollywood is so bent on diversity and want to create a spy series featuring an African-American British spy, then they need to create an original character for Idris Elba that will allow him to do so. Because that's what Hollywood was originally planning to do with Halle Berry's character Jinx at the end of Die Another Day. However, things just didn't work out and we never got that Jinx spin-off movie. So, if you want to make a spy movie, you can either make the Jinx movie with a 50-year-old Halle Berry, or you can go take Idris Elba, give him his own character in the James Bond universe, another 00 number, and you can go and create a franchise around Idris Elba, and make that spy character someone who is revolving around black British culture, which which revolves around black people in the UK, and give us a look at life in the black parts of the UK, and give us a perspective of life in as a spy in the black part of the UK, and show us how that experience relates to people all over the world. That's the story I would want to see, rather than a chocolate-covered white man. I want to see how this black spy deals with things like racism, how he deals with white supremacy, and how he has to deal with things like racial profiling when he goes to different countries. Those are things that James Bond can explore in his fantasy, but those are things Idris Elba's character could explore in his own stories, because if you create a brand new character and allow Idris Elba to play that brand new character, then he can bring some depth and some range to that character, and he can give us a fresh take on the whole spy genre as it relates to the African American culture, the UK African American culture, and the African American experience. Because a black man driving around in a fancy sports car, that's a guy who's going to get stopped by the constables in the UK, or the police here in America. And a black man walking around in designer suits, he's going to experience racism. So when I hear these people who talk about diversity saying, oh, we want to bring Idris Elba or Jamie Foxx or whoever into the role of James Bond, I'm sorry, no, James Bond is a white British guy, 
And he's a white British guy for a reason, because a white British man in white supremacist world can go out here to different countries, and his white skin gives him privileges that no other person in the world has. And you putting a black man in that role and thinking that he's going to have the same advantages, that's ridiculous, because no black man is going to be able to go to all these foreign countries and have those advantages of being able to go to these countries and just blend in and people never challenging him. And only a black man is going to have those problems of going to these countries. And when it comes down to the women, your black man is not someone who's going to have all the women like James Bond would because, again, many of these women out here in these foreign countries, they're not going to be receptive and many of the beta males in these countries, they're going to have a serious problem with that black man being getting the attention from their women in those lands. So there's a lot of stories there in a, in a James Bond universe for a black character to be featured in, but he needs to be his own character. And the reason why he needs to be his own character is because he will tell a richer and deeper story. And that story would have nothing to do with James Bond, because James Bond, again, is a white British man, and a white British man's experience is completely different than that of a black man in a UK. And it's a slap in the face to all of those brothers in the UK to say, let's just give Idris Elba the role of James Bond in the name of diversity, when there's a greater story to be told if we gave Idris Elba his own character. And Hollywood just doesn't want to give Idris Elba his own character because they're afraid that your Idris Elba in the role of a black spy, what he's going to do is he's going to overshadow James Bond and he might even possibly become more popular than James Bond. So what they want to do is make this chocolate covered white man in the same way Barack Obama was and bring him out here and make it where he can go out here and if he fails they'll just use that as an excuse to say oh black movies don't sell and black people don't want to watch spy movies but if they went out here and put some effort in then maybe they might actually make a movie that people might actually want to see because I look at the whole concept of a black secret agent a black spy and it's a it's something that could be done I mean you could easily adapt Live and Let Die, the Roger Moore classic film which dealt with drug dealers in Harlem with a black spy. And there are, you could also make an original story featuring this black spy and him going to parts of Africa or the black parts of the UK or France or Germany. And it would be very fresh and exciting because we would be getting to see aspects of black life in a spy movie and we would get to see how these intelligence campaigns impact people in black communities. There's a, far, a very very rich story here but again Hollywood is just so caught up on the surface of promoting diversity instead of making efforts to go out here and actually tell a compelling story which features a black hero going out here and taking on the bad guys. As the guy who writes stories in African American fantasy like The Temptation of John Haynes or stories like those in the Isis and the East Team series, I know it's possible to write these type of stories and I know it's possible to make them really compelling and make it something the audience can get into. Unfortunately when it comes down to these SJWs they preach diversity and they want to do shallow gestures towards diversity like casting Idris Elba as James Bond but those gestures all they do is alienate the audience who can see right through this shallow gesture and I saw an example of that this year when the CW decided they wanted to make John Diggle the new Green Arrow. Now your John Diggle was clearly not qualified to be the Green Arrow and passive-aggressively your Greg Berlanti gave the character of John Diggle the role of Green Arrow, then had him addicted to drugs, and then had it where Oliver Queen had to come in and take the role back 
And then John Diggle and Oliver Queen had an argument which had one of the most powerful moments as related to white supremacy. And in that argument, John Diggle asks for the role of Green Arrow back, and Oliver Queen tells him that being the Green Arrow allows him to be the best him he can be. And when I heard that statement, and then I think about this whole campaign to make Idris Elba the new James Bond, that's why I have to say to, to Idris Elba, don't take that role, because it does not allow you to be the best Idris Elba you can be. It does not allow you to give the best performance you can give. And it does not allow you to actualize your potential as an actor. No man should sit there and ask to put on a white man's hand-me-down tuxedo. No, if Idris Elba wants to be the best James Bond type character or the best spy character he can be, he has to go out here and create his own character and tell his own story because nobody should have to ask to play the role in a white man's character or a white man's story. No, a black man needs to go out here and do like I do with the John Haynes character and tell your own story, rule your own world, and control your own destiny. That's the only way people are going to take you seriously and that's the only way they're going to take the stories you tell as a creator seriously is if you go out here and make your own stories and tell your own stories because as I see it I don't want to see an Idris Elba James Bond no I don't want to see a black man wearing some white man's hand-me-down costume looking like Rastus from the Cream of Wheat box. No, I don't need to see that in a James Bond movie. No, I want to see Idris Elba being polished, sophisticated, and intelligent, being his own man and not some carbon copy of a white man. If you want to see a strong male heroine, you can, like the Isis character or the East Team character, you can pick up my Isis and East Team series books on Amazon.com. And if you want to see a strong black man in action-packed African-American fantasy, you can pick up The Temptation of John Haynes or The Man Who Rules the World on Amazon.com. And if you want to help me make more videos like this, you can donate to my Patreon. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.